Take your Bibles, turn with us, please, to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. I'm going to get right into the Word. And we're going to close with communion this morning. The good news is I'm, I've been, been working real hard to trim my notes. Somebody said. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, from eight pages to seven. I don't want to spoil you right off. I mean, I don't want to throw you in some kind of shock, you know. And, uh, but but we'll, we'll be relatively brief. How many think that relatively is a very interesting word? <laughs> Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, the Bible says, Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. As you repent and you turn around, you turn back, and as your sins are blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that He may send the Christ appointed for you. Gee, I love that. That He may send the Christ appointed for you. <laughs> Amen. How many thankful that God appointed Jesus for you? He loves the whole world, but he has an appointment with you. I've never seen that. I know I'm a little slow, but that really blessed me. Verse 21, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things. And I know this is a prophetic thing, but I believe that God as well wants to restore all things in our lives at this present time. Amen. What Satan has meant for evil, God wants to turn for good. How many believe that? whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Luke, the writer of, of Acts, admonishes us, if you're in right relationship with God, now listen, there is a refreshing in your future. Say it with me. There is a refreshing in your future. Say it again. There is a refreshing in your future. How many could use a refreshing? How many, when you go to the cabinet, you, you, you dig through the bread until you find a stale slice of bread? How many likes fresh bread? Come on now, fresh fruit. I like fresh Jesus. Amen. Some of us are a bit stale this morning, a little stiff, a little crusty. Look around, see if you see any cr crusty Christians. Amen. We need God, we need God, one appointed to us. To bring a refreshing, a renewal in our spirit to fan the flame that he lit in our heart at the time of salvation. The truth is that not, there's not a one of us in this building that wouldn't appreciate an occasional refreshing renewal, reviving of our body, soul, and mind. A spiritual, mental, emotional, physical lift that re-energizes re our everyday lives. There's none of us that would not line up for that. A spiritual charging of our batteries. A spiritual trip to the beach. A spiritual tri trip to the beach. Sometimes a physical trip to the beach is a spiritual trip to the beach. A journey to the mountains. Somebody, come on. Or a retreat to a secret place. We all know, every one of us in this building know that we live in an ever-draining world that by nature, by nature sucks the life and energy out of us. Life happens, situations arise, storms brew on the horizon. Yet God has promised in Isaiah 40 and 28, have you not known, have you not known, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. And even the youths shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That is God's promise to every one of us here this morning. There's a refreshing in your near future. 
It is not in God's heart nor his will that you run on fumes. And so oftentimes, that's exactly where we're at. We're just hoping we can make it to the next service. God doesn't want you. Listen, God wants you to walk in on a Sunday morning full of spiritual vim and vigor, testifying of the faithfulness of God over the last six days. Not dragging in. It's not in God's heart nor His will that you run on fumes, that you run on empty, that you live depleted and exhausted lives, just merely existing and surviving. But there shall come seasons of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And there is nothing, no one, that can refresh you like the presence and the Spirit of Almighty God. Nothing, nothing can energize your soul like the Spirit of Almighty God. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want you to hear my heart because I have mentioned this on several occasions, but I want to reiterate this fact. Listen, you've got to want it. You've got to want this before you can walk in it. You've got to want it to walk in it. I've never seen anyone walk in an anointing they have no use for. And I've never seen anyone revel in a refreshing that they have no time for. We must close our spiritual umbrellas and open our hearts to God. And if we do, this is exactly how God responds to us. Because God responds to thirsty. God responds to thirsty. Isaiah 44, 3. For I will pour water on what? Thirsty land. And streams on dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. You shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. Your spiritual desire will determine your divine delivery. Friends, if you don't desire it, it's not going to show up on your doorstep. You've got to want it to walk in it. Say it with me. You've got to want it to walk in it. Make it personal. I've got to want it to walk in it. Amen. I can only preach so good. I know that surprises whoever that was. <laughs> Thank you. I can only preach so good. I only have so many gifts, so many talents. I have only so many words in my vocabulary, and they're, they're, very, they're very small. They're getting smaller every day. What was I going to say? Anyway, the issue is you can have all that you want. And it doesn't depend on a preacher. It doesn't depend on a program. It depends on your hunger and your thirst. You determine, you determine your your divine delivery. You determine how much God opens the heaven above you. Your hunger and your thirst is the very thing that activates the delivery of God in your behalf. You don't have to wait to get it on Sunday. You can wake up on Monday morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I am so hungry for the things of God. God, open the heaven, and God descend upon you and bless your socks off. I mean, how long has it been since you shouted all over the living room floor, since you danced in the the driveway until neighbors looked down and said, what in the world is going on over there? I believe God is the God of every day and all time, and He wants to open the heavens all the while amen you got to want it to walk in it hear David's heart cry this man that God was crazy about why was David so special well he had his issues he had his issues but God was crazy about David man after his own heart one of my favorite psalms Psalm 63 Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. I know I've read this many times over the years. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So have I looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. It's better than life. It's better than life. My lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. For my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Hallelujah. That's the kind 
of hunger and thirst that God responds to. You've got to want it to walk in it. And yet the reality for us this morning is this. None of us, none of us here can escape those seasons of drought. Seasons of drought or exhaustion. Those seasons of dryness and emptiness. Ecclesiastes 3 says, for everything there is a season. So we would love to live in this ecstasy of his presence just walking right next to God in that third heaven. We would love that. We want that once you've tasted of the goodness of God and the sweetness of his presence. Nothing else satisfies, but the reality is that there's times we've got to walk and live by faith. We don't feel anything. There's no doodads running up and down our spinal cord. We just, we just live and exist based on what we know in our spirit and what the word of God declares is truth. And we just keep putting one foot in front of the other, whether, whether we feel like it or not, because we believe that God is faithful and there shall come seasons and times of refreshing in our future. And just because you don't feel God, don't throw in the towel and walk away. Blame God for his unfaithfulness. For everything there is a season. You would not appreciate the good times unless first you experience some bad times. It was this, in this season of separation and isolation. A man named David, a man without a country, a man, a fugitive, a man separated, isolated from his family. He was anointed king, as we mentioned last week, and yet there was already a king, and this king is fallen over jealous of him. And, and so for, for weeks and months and years, David had, had been hunted and hounded like a like a, like a dog, like an animal. And we find in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 13, I'd like you to turn there and just look at this scripture. In 2 Samuel 23 and verse 13, it's in this scenario, this situation, this season of David's life that we see this drama unfold. And three of the 30 chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam when a band of Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, this cave, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And notice verse 15, And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Talking about a longing for refreshing. Do you have a longing? Is there a longing, a craving, a yearning, a heart's cry for more of God this morning? He only responds to the thirsty. David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. He knew exactly where it was at. David earnestly longed for refreshing Refreshing from this well of Bethlehem. Now I want you to understand something this morning. This was not just any city. And this was not just any well. This was David's city. This was David's well. According to many Bible scholars, David was born in and around Bethlehem. This was David's hometown. This is where David grew up. Bethlehem was his life, his world. No doubt David knew the area like the back of his hand. He tended his father's sheep in the fields near Bethlehem. And when they were thirsty, he knew just where to get water, the best water. And it was found, the well of Bethlehem, by the city gate. Now listen, because this is very important. Now these years later, in a very dry and difficult season in his life, once again, he longs for a drink, a cool, clear drink of water from Bethlehem's well. This was the water that had quenched his thirst as a youth and refreshed his soul as a young adult. Besides the fact this was harvest time, the Bible says in our text, this was harvest time. The weather was historically hot and dry. The streams and the cisterns had little to no water. And any amount of water was at a premium, even in the cave 
of a duelum. Add insult to injury. A garrison of the Philistines, Israel's arch enemy, had taken Bethlehem, had taken Bethlehem, including the well there at Bethlehem's gate, David's hometown. His home, his home was being held hostage by the enemy. And yet in this setting, in this situation, this desperate cry is heard, perhaps under his breath, but those round about him heard exactly what his heart was saying. And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Understand, David was battle-worn and battle-weary, battle-fatigued. He was out of gas. He was running on fumes. He was desperate for a refreshing in his own physical, spiritual body. The truth is, David had probably been on the run from his father-in-law, Saul, for approximately 10 years. 10 years. This isn't just a day-by-day situation. For month after month and year after year, David, a fugitive, running for his life for 10 long years, yet knowing in his heart that he had been anointed to be king of Israel, that surely better days were coming, but he could not see a break in the cloud or a light at the end of the tunnel. Ten years running, ten years on the run. And David says, I long for a drink from the well of Bethlehem. He craved for, desired, yearned for just a drink of cool, cold water from this well that he knew well. Now, now hear me this morning. I believe, I personally believe that for, for David, it was more than just a drink of water. It was more than just, I remember how it tasted. I believe David was homesick. He longed for the good old days. Bethlehem, well, to him, spoke of simpler and happier times. How many of us can identify with young David this morning longing for a deep drink of water from Bethlehem's well? We long for those simpler and happier times when all was good on the farm. Matter of fact, we just want to hug the well because of the kingdom memories that we have here. Have there, there's, there's many of us here this morning that we have these calendar dates and these spiritual watermarks in our lives where God has come and God has been so rich and the Spirit has been so sweet and we've been swept away in the anointing and the kabod, the glory of His presence and we, we yearn for those times again. We, we've cherished those moments. It's been a long time since we have shed tears Tears of joy, not of sadness. It's been a long time since we've been really free inside. It's been a long time since we've really sensed liberty and the anointing of God and the favor of God and the authority of God and the power of God. And we feel at times we're just a shell existing. I want you to know, I believe that I have a prophetic word for you this morning. There is a refreshing in your near future. There is a refreshing in your near future. Don't give up. Don't walk away. Don't give in. But keep looking to the God, which is the author and the finisher of your faith, for that good work that he has begun in you, he shall complete it against that day. He is faithful. Come on. He is faithful to perform that which he's promised. The rest of the story is the story of epic courage and risk. For Samuel 23 and verse 16, we pick up the story. Once they heard David's longing cry, then the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. Amazing. But he would not drink of it. They had risked their lives for it. But he poured it out to the Lord as a drink offering and said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their own lives? He said, I refuse to drink what you have sacrificed so much for. And he poured it out on the ground. 
to pay honor, listen, to pay honor for the sacrifices made of these three mighty men. I close with this amazing truth. Fast forward a thousand years. Another child was born in Bethlehem. Another child anointed king out of due season. (laughs) Another child out of the lineage and loin of Jesse, the father of David. Anybody know where I'm heading? For unto you is born in this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to where? Bethlehem. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Now here's the difference that I want you to catch. Here's the kingdom difference. Jesus wasn't longing for the water from Bethlehem's well. He was the water in Bethlehem's well. Amen. He was the water and the well. Some thousand years later. The well, Isaiah 12, 3 said, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to who? To the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for He has done gloriously. Let this be be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Who was that speaking of? Christ the Lord. Bethlehem's baby. He was not only the well, He was the water. For in John 4 and verse 5, so Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour, about noon. A woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman, this half-breed, half-Jew, half-Gentile woman, said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. How many is thankful that Jesus has dealings with everyone that will call on his name? Red and yellow, black and white, they are all precious in his sight. There is no place for racism in the kingdom of God. That's free. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, that's speaking to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Where does that living water come from? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock. In verse 13, Jesus said to her, Everyone, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again and the water I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life somebody say amen on Sunday morning because of the life giving water that Christ has given to all of us to all that will hunger and thirst after righteousness and the woman said to him sir give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water So I ask you this morning, as I wrap this up, are you that person? Are you that individual that is battle-worn and battle-weary? Are you that person that is trying to survive a season of drought and exhaustion? I ask you this morning, are you struggling to keep your head above water And just make ends meet spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and yes, even financially. 
I ask you this morning, are you homesick for simpler times, happier times? Times when God was so real and your heart was so full and you live so freely and so spiritually energetic. Are you that person that it's been so long since you have prayed in tongues or the river that Jesus spoke of in John 7? On that great day of the fe- feast, if any man thirst, let him come unto me, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which was not given. The good news is that Spirit has been given, and the river is flowing. But it's been a long time since the water has flowed out of its banks in your own heart and life. Are you that person this morning? Are you that individual that you need a refreshing in your own walk with the Lord? I just tell you, God has promised you water, living water from the well. There is, there is a refreshing in your future. How many believe that? Acts 3 and 20, allow me to read it again. The times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will send the Christ, that Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Consider this one thing. David poured water out because of blood. Jesus poured the blood out because of living water. Today, Jesus, because he has paid the price, because he has shed his blood, because he has become our sacrifice and our substitute. He has the right and the authority and the privilege and the honor to say to each and every one of us this morning, drink of me, drink of me. Drink of my goodness and my grace. Drink of my glory, my might, my power. Drink of my joy and my peace. Drink of my hope and my confidence. Drink of me, drink of me, for he can satisfy every longing of the human soul, regardless of how unique that it is. He can satisfy your longing soul. But Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, the water that only you can provide for yourself. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him or her will never be thirsty again. For the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. Praise God. You know, in prepping for this morning, I was telling one of the staff members yesterday, I was going down a total, totally different path as far as the service than just kept running into a wall, a wall, a wall, a wall. You'd think I've been in ministry long enough to realize that, you know, one bump on the forehead would be enough to say, okay, God's wanting to do something different. But how many knows that that most of us are are pretty, let, let me rephrase that, I am pretty dense sometimes. And so finally, like, it dawned on me, oh, oh, you want something different. And he just began to lay it out for me. He just began to speak to my spirit. There are those that are struggling. Oh, they they put on a good front. They they share a good smile. You know, they punch this religious time clock every Sunday, but they are dying inside. They're withered. They are withered. Their spirit is withered. And just a few moments in my presence can change everything can change everything. Oh, your surroundings may stay the same, but He changes you. He changes you. It changes your perspective. It changes your faith. It changes your confidence. And I'm just here, I'm just here to tell you and remind you that He wants you to drink of Him. When the Word came forth earlier, it was a confirmation to me This is what I want to do in this service in the hearts of this people. 
So it's up to you. You can walk away from it or you can walk toward it. But know this, you've got to want it before you can walk in it. You've got to want it before you can walk in it. Amen. So this is how we're going to close the service because the Lord just instructed me in this as well. And we're going to receive communion together. And I just want us all to stand together right now. And you should have received the elements as you came into the building today. But in case that you do not have communion elements, would you just lift your hand? We want to make sure that everyone has been served. We have some in the East Overflow. We have some in the West Overflow, back in the back. Gentlemen, can you help us with that, please? Just keep your hand up because we want to make sure that you're served. This is what the Lord spoke to me concerning this moment. As we honor him, as we honor his sacrifice, as we honor the stripes that he bore on Calvary for our healing, for the suffering he endured in his body, for the blood that he shed and spilled for our salvation, as we honor him in communion, he's going to honor you in a response. And as you receive communion this morning in remembrance of him, now listen, in remembrance of him this morning, he is going to remember you. Because heaven responds to thirst. You need not fight this battle alone. Because here's the rest of the story. Alone, there will come a day that that battle will defeat you. But in Him, in Him, you are more than a conqueror.